Do you know which country hosted the first World Cup? The honor of being the inaugural host fell to the South American nation of Uruguay in 1930. Now you may be wondering, why Uruguay? The selection of Uruguay wasn't random by any means. It was a calculated choice, a nod to the country's centennial celebrations of independence. What better way to mark a hundred years of freedom than by hosting the world's first ever football World Cup? But it wasn't just about the centenary. Uruguay's deep-rooted passion for football was undeniable. The country had already made a name for itself in the football world by clinching gold at the 1924 and 1928 Olympic Games. This passion, coupled with their proven track record, made Uruguay a fitting choice. Moreover, the country was not just a football-loving nation, it had also put in significant work in football development and infrastructure. The Estadio Centenario, a colossal stadium built specifically for the tournament, is a testament to that commitment. It was not just a stadium, it was a symbol of Uruguay's readiness to welcome the world to its shores for a spectacle like no other. The decision to host the World Cup in Uruguay also had a diplomatic angle. The move was seen as a way to foster international relations and unity through the universal language of football. It was a bold and daring move, considering the distance and cost that European teams would incur to participate. But as the saying goes, fortune favors the brave, and the decision turned out to be a historic one. So the stage was set in Uruguay, the football-loving nation, ready to host the world's first ever football World Cup. As the world watched with bated breath, the country prepared to put on a show that would forever change the landscape of international football. Can you guess how many teams participated in the first World Cup? Well, let's dive right into it. 13 teams graced the inaugural tournament with their presence. Now, that might not seem like a lot compared to today's 32, but back in 1930, it was a considerable gathering of the world's footballing talent. Out of these 13 teams, seven hailed from South America. That's right, more than half of the participating teams were from the host continent. This number included football powerhouses, Argentina, Brazil, and of course the hosts, Uruguay. The remaining South American teams were Chile, Peru, Bolivia, and Paraguay. However, the World Cup wouldn't be a truly global tournament without representation from other parts of the world. And so, two teams from North America joined the fray. These were the United States and Mexico, both eager to prove their mettle against the South American and European teams. Speaking of Europe, let's talk about the continent where football was born. Understandably, European teams were hesitant to make the long and expensive journey to South America. After all, transatlantic travel in the early 20th century was no easy feat. However, four determined teams made the voyage. These were France, Yugoslavia, Romania, and Belgium. Their participation not only demonstrated their commitment to the beautiful game, but also set a precedent for future World Cup tournaments. These 13 teams, each with their unique strengths and styles, came together in a melting pot of footballing culture and talent. They came not knowing what to expect, but ready to write their names in the annals of football history. Their participation marked the beginning of a tradition that would capture the hearts of millions around the world for decades to come. And so, with 13 teams from three continents, the first World Cup journey began. Who do you think won the first World Cup? This question takes us back to the year 1930, when the world's most celebrated football tournament was in its infancy. The stage was set, the teams were ready, and the host nation, Uruguay, was eager to showcase its prowess on the football field. Emerging victorious from this inaugural tournament was none other than the hosts themselves. From the onset, the Uruguayan team, led by their astute coach Alberto Supici, displayed a level of skill and strategy that set them apart. Supici, a man known for his tactical acumen, guided the team through each match, ensuring they were well prepared to face their opponents. Among the team's star players were Jose Nasazi and Hector Scarone. Nasazi, known as El Gran Mariscal, was the team's captain and a defensive stalwart. His leadership and presence on the field were instrumental in Uruguay's triumph. On the other hand, Scarone, a forward, was a scoring sensation. His agility, 
coupled with his ability to find the back of the net, made him a key player in Uruguay's offensive line. The final match against Argentina was a test of skill, strategy, and nerves. The stage was the Estadio Centenario in Montevideo, filled to the brim with spectators cheering for their respective teams. The match was a thrilling affair, with both teams displaying remarkable skill and grit. However, Uruguay's superior gameplay eventually led them to a 4-2 victory, marking a historic moment in the world of football. The triumph was a testament to Uruguay's footballing prowess and dedication. Their victory not only thrilled the home crowd, but also made headlines around the world, showcasing Uruguay's talent on the global stage. The victory was not just a win for the team, but for the entire nation. It instilled a sense of pride and joy in the hearts of Uruguayans, cementing their love for the beautiful game. And thus, the host nation Uruguay rose to become the first ever World Cup champions. Every great event has its memorable moments. What were they in the first World Cup? The inaugural World Cup was no exception to this rule, teeming with unforgettable instances that have since become part of football's rich tapestry. One such moment that stands tall in the annals of football history is the first ever World Cup goal. The man to etch his name into the record books was Lucien Laurent of France. In the opening match against Mexico, Laurent unleashed a shot that found the back of the net, a moment of uncontained joy and historical significance. His goal not only marked the beginning of France's journey in the tournament, but also symbolized the start of what would become the world's most celebrated sporting event. But the moments of magic were not confined to the opening match. The tournament's climax, the final between Uruguay and Argentina, was a spectacle of intense competition and high drama. This was not just a game, it was a battle, a clash of titans. The match was a testament to the physicality and competitive spirit that football in its purest form embodies. The final was fiercely contested, the tension palpable, and the atmosphere electric. The stakes were high, the pressure intense, but the players rose to the occasion, showcasing the beautiful game in all its glory. In this thrilling final, Uruguay showed their mettle, coming from behind to defeat Argentina four goals to two. The victory was sweet, and the celebrations euphoric. The players became national heroes, their names forever etched in the country's history and the hearts of their fans. These notable moments are more than just instances in a game. They are snapshots of emotion, skill, and passion. They serve as reminders of the tournament's spirit and the unifying power of football. They are the moments that make us hold our breath, cheer in joy, and fall in love with the game all over again. These memorable moments added to the excitement and history of the First World Cup. What impact did the First World Cup have on Uruguay and the world, you may ask? Well, the cultural aftershock of the 1930 World Cup was profound, resonating far beyond the boundaries of Uruguay. This tournament was not just about football, it was about national pride, identity, and the global community coming together to celebrate a shared passion. Uruguay, the host nation, found itself at the center of this global spectacle, basking in the limelight. The tournament showcased the country's deep-rooted passion for football, and its victory cemented its status as a footballing powerhouse. The World Cup's effect on Uruguay's national psyche was transformative. The victory was more than just a sporting achievement. It was a testament to the nation's resilience, determination, and skill. It was a moment of triumph that the people of Uruguay still cherish, a story that's told and retold a defining moment in the nation's history. But the reverberations of the First World Cup extended far beyond Uruguay. The tournament laid the groundwork for what the World Cup would become, the most watched and celebrated sporting event worldwide. It set the stage for future tournaments, establishing a blueprint that has been followed, refined and expanded upon over the decades. The legacy of the 1930 World Cup is enduring and powerful. It's a testament to the universal appeal of football, a sport that transcends borders, cultures, and languages. It's a reminder of how a shared love for a game can bring people from all walks of life together.
fostering a sense of global unity and camaraderie. So, the inaugural World Cup did more than just crown the first world champions of football. It set a precedent, it sparked a tradition, and it created a global phenomenon that continues to captivate the world nearly a century later. The inaugural World Cup left an enduring legacy, establishing the World Cup as a premier international sporting competition and setting the stage for future tournaments.